Spurgo, right? So if you're on Instagram, you you, you probably seen him, um, and all the celebrities are wearing it, and you're doing your thing. Well, it's only been around for a short period of time, and you're young. You're 14 years old, right? right. So you started this when you was 12, right? 12, January 2018. Um, I started with my birthday money, $178. Got my first 16 T-shirts. Um, sold out that week. Um, then I was able to reinvest, double up, 32 T-shirts. Um, just from there, we just kept on growing and kept on building. Turned two into a four, four, two. Yeah, yeah boy, doubled up quick, right? <laughs> right? So, but what made you even want to start a club? Because, like, at 12 years old, mm -hmm. most kids is thinking about video games mm -hmm. or they're thinking about sports or they're thinking about, you know, stuff that they're not thinking about business, let alone starting a business themselves. Mm -hmm. Where does that come from? Like, what gave you the idea that I want to be an entrepreneur? Uh, so I didn't even know what entrepreneur <laughs> meant at the time, uh, but so it was two. It was two things. So bit so clothing really because my mom she's a seamstress, and then coming from a household church every Sunday, and I'm getting like really dressed up, suit ties, everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like you can't come out the house looking a mess in my household. You gotta like <laughs> be right sneaks, nice. um, and then business because you know I wanted to show the youth like. Look, you could like you could own a business, you could get on jets, you could travel because um in my city of Philadelphia there's not a lot of hope. Like if you grow up in poverty and that's all you see, you know, that's all you know. Um so I'm just showing the youth, like, look, you could go to Hawaii, you could go to Miami, you could like you, you could, know what I'm you saying? Could chill with Diddy. And, you're right. <laughs> right. And you could uh you know, you could build a business and you could build a global brand and um and you could do whatever, like the sky is the limit. And I wanted to show the youth, like, look, this is like, here's an example. And I wanted it to be, you know, it, like a key factor, like to, to show the youth, like, look, chase your dreams and you could do whatever, you know, you, you, whatever you so, want to be. So you were saying that a um, uh, 12 year old murdered a 13 year old, something like that? Something yeah. Like so um, it was August. I remember. I think it was August 14th. Yeah, it was like August 14th. And I remember like it was yesterday, um, a 14-year-old got arrested for mur murdering a 13-year-old. And that hit me because, you know, that could have been me. That could have been my friend. That mm -hmm. could have been my cousin. And it hurt from like both sides of the like, you know, both sides. Like one kid, he's arrested, does life. You know, he just missed out on life, all the things he could have accomplished, everything. And then, you know, another family, they... They lost a family member, a mom lost a son, um, a brother lost a brother. And, you know, that just hit me like, you know, that got to stop. And it was happening, like things like that was happening, like on a regular. Um, and it's just, it was starting to become normal. So um, I wanted to show the youth, like, look, like, we got we got to turn it up. Like, you could chase your dreams. Hustle and positive. And also, like, um, what I started doing was hiring, like, my friends, my cousins, um, brother and everything like that, you know, and giving them opportunities to show them like you can make money um, in a positive way. You don't gotta, you know, sell drugs and you know do negative things, you know, for money and different things like that. It's positive ways always out here. It's yeah. positive opportunities. All that at twelve, man. What would you come up with the name Spurgo? All right, so Spurgo. Um, so Spurgo, I came up with the name Spurgo, combining the words sports and heroes. And heroes really, um, heroes like people who are just like just saving me, you know, and showing me, like, positive things. So I will always watch people like Damon John, Diddy, uh, Jay-Z. So they were, like, my heroes. So that's where I got the hero word from. And then G-O, G -O, um, I got, you know, I got that from, like, you know, Spurgo is for the go-getters. It don't matter what your profession is, as long as you're getting up, you're working hard to your dream. Um, and you grinding, you know, that's Spurgo. And we got like a few campaigns that means, you know, a lot of different things. So I got on the Leo sweatsuit um, and it says established in 2018. And, you know, so that's just like showing the beginning um, and everything like that. You know, the Leo sweatsuit been seen like by like Diddy recently today. Um, <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> baby. Um, a lot of just celebrities been seen wearing it. And then also we have another campaign, Spurgo Billionaire. And billionaire because um, every day, like I say, my affirmations, like I'm powerful, I'm strong, I'm a billionaire. So billionaire just affirming, you know, affirming that lifestyle, affirming like 
Spurgle going to be up there and, you know, just affirming positive things and affirming wealth. That's dope, man. So you got the first 16 T-shirts. You wasn't This wasn't like no lemonade stand. Right. What, what was the story of how you sold the first 16? So I, ser- I sold the first 16. All right. So before I started Spurgo, like I was I was doing music. So I was a rapper. <laughs> so um, I was posting. Uh, I sent out a message to everybody in my phone. I was posting on my Instagram um, like, look, I got this new um, business venture um, and this Spurgo. I posted the T-shirts and everything like that. And, you know, I sold I sold out the first week. A lot of my family members, the friends, everybody was on it. And I sold out so quick. Um, people were like pre-ordering and people were just like the, the demand a little bit was up there. Um, you know, about like five people, but (laughs) (laughs) your aunt, your uncle, your cousins, they all bought it. But how how did you expand? Like, did, did you go out in your school? Where where was you moving these shirts at? So after, so after the 16 shirts and I got 32 shirts, like after like the five people got their shirts from the 32, um, I started hitting a barbershop. So I started hitting every single barbershop, um, every single business and, you know, the city of Philadelphia every weekend. This started to be like a thing. Like, you know how some kids, they do basketball practice every Saturday. This was like my basketball practice mm. every every weekend. We would go out to every single barbershop, um, every single business, and I wouldn't come into the house unless every, you know, T-shirt was sold. So after it was 32 shirts, then we were able to move on to, I think it was like another batch of shirts, probably like 40 shirts. Then we were able to move on to hoodies. So now um, it's winter time. So it was in January, February. Now it's winter time. Now people are able to get, you know, hoodies and things that they really you know, want it. And that's what I wanted. In the beginning, I wanted hoodies and long sleeves, but I couldn't afford it. Um, mm. This was my birthday money that I was starting off with. Um, so um, then I was able to move on to hoodies and I kept moving, you know, to the barbershops and businesses. Um, and people just started knowing me because everywhere I go, you know, I was rocking Spurgo. Um, it was uh, it was our white and black t-shirt um and it's the yellow logo that this is our original logo um if you see me in a mall i had on spurgo if you see me um at my friend's birthday party it's, i had on spurgo i had the same t-shirt on for months straight and it was just getting i wanted to, to be annoying to people so <laughs> then um even i was still at probably like three, four thousand followers, people were noticing who I was. Um, I remember one time we was at the mall, True Religion, somebody was, um, he was like screaming like, yo, that's tr- like that's home and everything like that. And that was real cool, you know, because I wasn't even like um, real big on Instagram, Facebook, none of that. People were just noticing who I was just because brand consistency um, and me staying consistent to, you know, my brand. I wasn't wearing nothing else. Um, I would probably switch up the sneakers, the jeans, but same t-shirt um for months straight um and that's how i I got it to build i like i like a few things that you said there um the barbershop play is interesting because it's the center of influence especially in our community and in a black community amongst men so whose idea was it to target barbershops so who idea was it to target barbershop it was my mentor um, my first mentor, Nehemiah Davis. So Nehemiah Davis, I met, um, I shot him a DM um, before I even got my T-shirts made, um, before I even got my first T-shirts. Um, he gave me a course, and the course was just showing you, like, what what T-shirts to get, um, you know, what T-shirts to get, like, what good colors, you know, for brands. Like, red and yellow was, like, um a really, you know, good color, you know, for any type of logo. That's why I seen in like, you know, food. A lot of fast food places. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of just like um it red is seeing like a lot of different like logos across the board. Um so that course was just showing me, you know, like a lot of different things. But it was his idea to sh- to do the you know barbershops. He told me to hit you know some barbershops. So I hit every single barbershop, every single business. We even started moving to Camden a little bit because we hit all the barbershops in Philly. So I would type in zip codes like um barbershops and one nine one dot dot, <laughs> and we would hit every single barbershop. Then we started moving to Camden, and then that then from there we was doing like um then from there we did the online store um. I like I like that you keep saying we, yeah. Because mom is obviously the, the we in this this right. equation. But yeah. mom, you said it wasn't easy at first, right? You went no. into our first barbershop and it was like, 
What are we about to do in here? Yeah, we right. were both scared. Trey was petrified. I was scared right. for him um, <laughs> because that was like, his first time. Like, you know, we went over kind of like what he was going to say, but it's nothing like when you're in that moment, you know, and it was just like we were in the, you know, in South Philadelphia. Uh, but when we went in, he was like, you know, he whispered like to the guy, he was like, can I speak to the manager? <laughs> and he was like, yeah. Yeah, what's up? What's up, bro? And, and um, he was like, can I, you know, can I make an announcement and sell my, my, my t-shirts? He was like, yeah, sure. Right. So Trey got in the middle of the floor. He, it was like a long walk to the middle of the floor. Right? Yeah, yeah. He was scared. And then he was like, he was like, hey, everybody, you know, I got my t-shirts and, you know, I could be out selling drugs or, <laughs> yeah. or doing violence. Two years um, ago. Yeah. yeah. Two years. <laughs> it was like kind of all over the place. <laughs> and this my brand, Spurgo. He kept going like, this my brand, Spurgo. When I got t-shirts, all sizes all around and so they they were like in shock they was like wait ho 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 turn the music down like everybody like stopped what they was doing yeah. and it was probably like a very rewarding experience for me because I was nervous and it was just like mentorship like right on the spot like they right. embraced him like they was like turn the music down say no you over. gotta say it over you gotta <laughs> say it speak up because everybody had yeah everybody had their phones out um like they were reposting them and like you know had them do it a couple times like no add this and you know add that and um when that, that actually posted uh he got like twenty thousand views he oh, went wow. up like you know over a thousand followers oh, right. like everybody was commenting like you know like and there was so much encouragement for him mm -hmm. you know when he first started off and for me it was just like it was like that reassurance like he gonna be all right you right, know like right. he could it was like you I, he could do it no nah, it's good story because it's um a lot of time people make excuses yeah. in life and it's like all right so you start with a hundred and some odd dollar 147 dollars 147 78 178 dollars and you buy t-shirts and then you flip it so without even probably even knowing what you're doing you reinvest the money yeah, that's right. a business rule right you mm -hmm. got to reinvest the profits not just i make a hundred dollars and then i i spend it right you reinvest in it until you got enough to buy a sweatshirt and you reinvest until you got enough to buy a hoodie and a tracksuit mm -hmm. and the whole thing and your marketing, guerrilla marketing, mm -hmm. and sin of influences mm -hmm. where a lot of people are around and they can spread the message and you don't have any any um, fear in doing it. Right. That stops a lot of people right there. Yep. It's like mm -hmm. just to be able to get in front of a barbershop in front of strangers and pitch yourself, that takes a lot of courage. Yeah, right. And it's like even, scared, even yeah. for adults, like how, there's a, a ton of adults that are scared to tell their friends that they want to start a business, right. yep. right. let alone a room full of strangers. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, you know, it's one thing if you did it in like your own barbershop, but you're mm -hmm. going into some neighborhoods that ain't. You right. know what I'm saying? Like you right. don't even know the people. Right. right. That that takes a lot of courage and dedication, man. So were you, were you able to put the merch in the shops? Like mm. we we uh further down the line, I put like some some. Uh, I came out with my first do rag, so I put some do rags <laughs> in the barbershop. Okay. Yeah. Smart. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Oh yeah, so I did. I, I I did um put some merch and you know a few barber shops and that was like my first you know piece of distri um, distribution distribution yeah. um yeah but I was still going out to barber shops even when I did have uh you know some merch and barber shops some Spurgo gear and barber shops I was still going out to barber shops mm -hmm. as well so like that was like kind of like two streams a little bit getting it from you know that barber shop and then also. Um, going out to barber shops and also that was kind of like a pickup location as well. I would send people there um, when I uh, sold out, um, you know. So that was kind of like a pickup location as well, um, and it was really, it was really, really cool. So Saturday, that's your Saturday routine. You was going to barber shops, right? Like twenty barber shops in the city, right? Yeah. All day Saturday, all day, yeah. and you just selling hand to hand mm -hmm. in the barber shop all day. So all right, so now you got a whole thing going with the barber shops, and your name is building in the city. I'm mm -hmm. assuming. So what's the next play after that to grow the brand? So after the barbershop, I was moving around in the city um, and somebody gave me, you know, Diddy number. It's the show number. And uh, how does somebody yeah, give that you is, Diddy number? Whoa, no. wait, slow bit. Uh, Rewind. Uh, it's an important uh, person that gave you his number. Uh, so, so, so Trey was moving around so much that it was just like, it's almost like, how can I help? You know, like, 
people like because I think it, you know, when you're working hard, it draws people to you. It's like you know, like they want to be a part of helping you be successful. Mm-hmm. And it, it is real people out here that really genuinely want to. Nah, help. I'm glad you said that because that's something that is underrated too. Law right. of inertia. Yeah. Law of inertia is like uh, object in motion stays in motion. Mm-hmm. An object. And um, mm-hmm. still stay still. Mm-hmm. Like once you get the ball rolling, and Wallow told me to shout out to Wallow. Um, yeah, we spoke. We, every we speak a lot, but he was. I, I was asking him. I'm like, yo, how you get all this bar stool? How he was like, yo, once you get hot, bro, mm-hmm. it's just like you yeah. just you just you, like things track. Like you mm-hmm. energy attracts energy, like right. the energy, right? So it's like, and people want to be around people that are successful. It's mm-hmm. human nature. Mm-hmm. So it's like once you really start to get that ball rolling. You'd be surprised how many right. blessings just randomly just right. start falling in your lap. Yeah, you've been on the road since. We, we it's mm-hmm. been yeah because it's like constantly working and so many people are so it's like even if people don't notice you the first time they may see you in another setting like wait oh yo so I saw hurt. him before yeah. like or I saw that brand and then they're now they're now digging in their brain like where did I know it like so they're now researching him or where they saw him first so it was like he you know he's out here doing something positive you know inspiring other kids so it's like how can I help him to keep going and he legit gave him the number and um first thing you do is what uh I, <laughs> Honestly, the first thing I did was FaceTime him. <laughs> right up. away, no games. He ain't pick up. <laughs> so uh, I, I I made him a video, um, and that's one thing about me. Like I'm big on the videos, pictures is cool, but I do videos. Um, I sent them a video. Hey, Mr. Sean, my name is Trey Brown. Uh, uh, my name is Trey Brown. I'm a 12 year old entrepreneur. Um, I'm CEO of my own clothing brand called Spurgo, and then everything like that. I'm gonna send y'all the video. Uh. <laughs> so um, after that. Um, that was like mid July. I'm packing up shirts in August. Um, one morning, and my phone just keeps on buzzing. It just constantly. Um, it, it just kept on buzzing. I check my phone, and people tell me that you know Diddy, you know, shouted me out. Mr. Sean shouted me out. Um, and that was just like the big, like a big step for me because a lot of people in Philly seeing it. So that stepped up my credibility. A lot of people, you know, all over the world was just hitting me up like, yo, I need a shirt. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but good thing is I had, I set the website up in May. So, uh, and he shouted me out in August. So now everybody all around the world able to order a Spurgle shirt, um, and everything like that. So that was really cool. You know, people just wanting to help people, you know, sharing as well. You know, so that was the first step. Um, that was the first day. Um, my website just sold out. Everything had sold out. Um, That's crazy. First day on a jet. My first day, you know, um, inside a Maybach. So that day was really good. Later on, uh, no, actually from that post, I was able to get my first wholesale, my first wholesale deal. Um, and that was for 500 shirts. They didn't want no discount or nothing like that. They ordered 500 shirts at, like, at the time, the shirts was $25. 25. That's why I said at the time, because they ain't 20, <laughs> they like, ain't 25 <laughs> You hear that? The price went up. <laughs> yeah, so they was, uh, like, 25 at the time. Also, at that time, I just gained some connections as well. A lot of people in his family, they, you know, they knew me, and they was, like, um, DMing me and things like that. Um, so later on that month, um, I, I found out Meek Mill, he was having a pop-up shop inside Philly. Um, me growing up, being from Philly, Meek Mill was somebody that I look up to heavy. Um, somebody that came from, you know, uh, streets and everything like that and made it and being successful. So I found, I, I saw that he was, you know, had a pop-up shop in Philly and he was going to be there. Um, luckily I was off from school that day. I met him. He posted me on his Instagram, um, er, Early before I met him, I had my affirmations up. I'm powerful. I'm great. I'm amazing. Everything like that. Um, but when he shouted me out, um, Meek, you know, it gave me another, you know, step of credibility. Like this kid is like everywhere, this is and good. like this is crazy. Um, so after that, like it just it just kept building from there. With you know, with the wholesale deal from you know people seeing me on Diddy page. Um, I was able to get my first sweatsuits, um, sold out of them sweatsuits. Then I was able to buy, you know, my first jackets. Now we got like a full warehouse full of different products. Um, like we got sweatsuits, crew necks, uh, different t-shirts, um, body swimwear. suits, swimwear, um, slides. Now we got like a full warehouse. We got a full brand, full collections. Um, and Spurgle is like really getting up there so- now. 
my graduates from my school being Forbes. Bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs> a mic drop. Bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs>